Hey YouTube, Jeffrey here on Kopangan. Now after 10 days of no cell phone, I am actually very glad to have it again. I thought the detox would kind of break my habit, but it definitely didn't do that. No, it's just, it's really good to be connected. Um, it was a very valuable experience, but there's way too much to go into here. So I just want to run through a few things that I think I picked up. Um, and considering it's pretty much just friends and family who watch these, we can go over the rest of it if you're curious uh, the next time I see you guys. So, um, yeah, I guess the first point was really just that uh, it was a valuable experience. I'm glad I did it. I came and found what I was looking for, but I wouldn't do it again. Um, it was very uncomfortable. I can't deny that. Uh, sitting in a very uncomfortable position for a long time um, and not exercising for like nine days and not eating for four days and uh, not being clean for like all 10 days uh, was very uncomfortable and I've never been that uncomfortable for that long. It was a very good experience, very formative, very character building uh, and I'll never do it again. <laughs> but um, that said, I did learn a lot and I'm really glad that I did it. I'm really glad I came here. Um, but I think the biggest thing I took away from it was the practice, not so much the information. Uh, the information is actually very much available to the West, and I'll make that my second point, is that if you want to learn about Buddhism and Buddhist teachings and meditation and Vipassana and being mindful and present, there is plenty of that. And especially in the U.S. nowadays, that idea is growing rapidly, and it has been around for a long time. I started listening to the lectures of Alan Watts now over a year ago, and um, a lot of the same things uh, were covered in our teachings uh, at the meditation retreat with a Buddhist monk. Um, so I think he had a pretty good grasp on things, and I'll post some links in the doobly-doo below uh, where you can find some Alan Watts teachings, and uh, you can also find some more modern guys. Sam Harris talks about a lot of the same stuff. Um, there's actually a new book out called Why Buddhism is True by Robert Wright. I'll post a link to that as well, and he did a podcast with Sam Harris uh, where he goes into some of the science behind what you know Lord Buddha figured out 2,500 years ago uh, and what science is now telling us today uh, is that a lot of what he discovered and his methods really do work to help people improve their lives. Um, but it does take practice, and I'll make that point three that silence is golden. I don't know how much of it was the actual sitting and practicing meditation or how much of it was just not being distracted for 10 days, but I was able to hold a single train of thought for like 45 minutes. It was amazing. I've never been able to do that before. Um, and it helped me work through a lot of things that I needed to work through. And it was a very powerful experience to be able to do that. Uh, and having that experience um, has shown me how important it is to unplug from time to time. And uh, one of the first things that our teacher told us in our, our first lecture was, uh, there is wisdom and there is knowledge. You, know, you can learn knowledge just from the books, from teachings, from listening and understanding something, but it's only from your own experience that you gain true wisdom. And uh, I think you know, going through that experience built a, a great deal of wisdom for me. And uh, you know, one of the, the principles of Buddhism that we went into a lot is that all life is connected. And it, it feels super woo-woo and it's kind of hard to grasp and accept, especially for a modern Western, especially for somebody born in the United States where not a lot of things are connected but when you really start digging in it's a very defensible position and just having that idea that life is transient and all life is connected makes a pretty good moral foundation and I, I won't go into it here uh, I will flesh it out at some point especially when I actually have a keyboard and can write this coherently um, but I, I think I was able to put together a, a pretty solid moral code for my life um, with some very basic precepts that really gave me some guidance and, and I think I can lean on in the future and 
and I'll make that the last point is that I did come and find what I was looking for. Um, I came here really because I was lost uh, and I didn't know where I was going with my life and I, I thought I'd figure that out but it kind of seemed that I hadn't and then I felt very lost this summer and um, now things are starting to look in the right direction uh, at least you know internally now I have to make them go in the right direction externally but at least I have a direction and, and I haven't felt that in a little while um, so yeah so uh, plan basically a B and C for you know the next several months is figure out how I get myself into a PhD program um, I'll dig more into the details on what that possibly could mean uh, I don't really have any solid plans yet but uh, I will figure them out as I go along. So, anyway, just wanted to uh, give a little update, a little review on my week at Watch Cow Tom. Um, and it's, uh, it's been quite an experience, but I've only got another day here, just kind of decompressing. Got a place at this hostel here. Um, Thailand's a good place to stretch the dollar, but want to move on. Gonna spend a little time in Malaysia before I catch a flight out of Singapore next week and head up to Scandinavia. Um, but I'll keep checking in. Take care.